Hey guys, we're back for some more standard. Uh, made a couple minor changes here to the Boros Convoke deck. Um, and I just hit Mythic last night. Um, should be, I think, rank somewhere around top 275 or so. Might have shifted a little bit today. But uh, yeah, absolutely loving this deck. It's been going really well. Still holding an impressive win rate. Um, at least I think it's pretty good. It's still at 69% uh, win rate with something like... 40 total games or something close to that so very happy with it um so a couple of the minor changes i ended up cutting the two sanguine evangelists and replacing them with war leaders call and part of the reason i ran into a mirror match and they had war leaders call and i didn't and oh my god was it a beating this card is so nasty um, in this deck especially this is also gives us really good game against like control decks where like if we run out of gas um, just by playing creatures we're, we're, we have a way of interacting and dealing damage to the opponent so that's pretty powerful um, but yeah so I made that change I feel pretty good about it um, two feels right just because we kind of wanted it to be um, top end we don't want to have um, you know too many of these since you know obviously most of our deck is creatures and functions on creatures so two is kind of where I'm starting I could be wrong but that's kind of how I feel right now um the other thing so I also put together a sideboard for you guys so for those of you who want to play best of three um here is the board and kind of the plan with the sideboard you have a huge game plan against mono red which is can be a pretty tight race so what we do against the mono red matchup we basically get as low to the ground as possible we cut all four of our Imidane's recruiters cut two of the war leaders calls and one gleeful demolition and then two thran portals which are you know pretty painful in that matchup and then we bring in two basic planes in place of the thran portals so cut two portals bring in two planes um, cut all your three drops here and then you're bringing in four copies of knockout blow um, one copy of lantern flare for that extra life gain and then two copies of Thalia. So that feels like a pretty pretty good matchup there against Mono Red post board. Um, you have a total of nine different ways to gain life after board. Um, Thalia also just helps kind of tax their spells. Everything kind of gets lower to the ground and then we make our mana a little less painful. So um, since we are cutting six red cards, um, actually seven red cards, Cutting down two of these portals into basic planes feels pretty good. You still have um, 12 sources of red where you're able to cast um, either Epicure or the three remaining copies of Demolition. So that's kind of the mono red matchup. Um, against control, specifically like blue white control, Esper control, the plan there is cut four copies of Lunark Veteran since you really don't need the life gain. And then you bring in two copies of Thalia and two copies of Invasion of Gobakan. So both of these are meant to be able to be played before uh, the turn, before they play Temporary Lockdown, which is one of the biggest um, tools they have against us. So that feels pretty good. Um, you might maybe want to bring in like one copy of Get Lost. I wouldn't, you know, bring in too many copies. So this can target, you know, their Planeswalkers, their, um, their man land. It can, you know, uh, free up a uh, temporary lockdown if they manage to get one off. So maybe one copy. And then I think maybe you would cut, uh, I'm not even sure. Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe like, I don't know, one copy of like Frontliner or something. I, I'm not exactly sure for that last cut. But I think that the rest of it um, is just a pretty straightforward change. You cut out your life gain that you don't need, and then you bring in Invasion of Goba Khan and Thalia. Uh, against like big, um, big threat decks like Mono Black, or maybe like Jund, or possibly Golgari, that have like big scary threats like Shieldred, we have four copies of Get Lost. And that's kind of a catch-all against any kind of enchantment, any kind of creature that is just sort of too big.
but comes down in time for us to sort of get uh, blocked by it. And then in the mono white matchup, um, kind of depending on if you're on the play or the draw, I would sideboard just a little bit differently. It's a very minor change, but if you're on the play post board, I'd bring in two copies of Invasion of Goba Khan and then one copy of Lantern Flare. And what I would cut there is I would take out, probably shave um, like one frontliner, one demolition, and maybe one reinforcements just to kind of squeeze some room. And the purpose of that is you want to be able to invasion the turn before they go to Brutal Cathar or Adeline or something like that. Um, but it's, it's really a lot more useful on the play than the draw. Um, on the draw, maybe just, you know, take out like one Gleeful Demolition and replace it with Lantern Flare, uh, which is pretty much the only card I'd bring in at that point. Um, you could also kind of get into the weeds with Get Lost. This is an answer that could deal with like their Brutal Cathars. The problem that I have there is that um, you're giving them resources that they can use. And any kind of beatdown deck, this is why I don't bring in Get Lost against like Mono Red. I also wouldn't give it to, you know, like Mono White humans or aggro because they can readily use those map tokens to, you know, kind of even the odds. So try to use the, your Get Lost against like, you know, Domain. Domain's a great um, deck to bring in like four copies of Get Lost since they can't really make great use of those tokens. Um, that's pretty much the board game, uh, or excuse me, the sideboard plan. And one other note here, um, against any kind of deck, let's say that you feel pretty good. Maybe you have kind of a soft opponent where your deck is very highly favored. Um, what I might do if the only real way that you lose is if you lose to yourself by getting mana screwed, bring in two planes cut something that's, you know, not a huge difference just to make sure that you hit your land drops. That would be the only other point I'd make on sideboarding. Um, okay, great. Let's go ahead and jump into some best of one. And if you're new to my channel, thank you so much again for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. If you like my content, please consider subscribing, maybe dropping a comment or a like, or sharing it with a friend who might like it. And for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for supporting me. It really does mean the world to me. I, I do say that every video, but it's true. Thank you guys so much. But yeah, really excited about Limited. Um, also just trying to learn kind of the format as best I can. Um, so hopefully we'll make a video for that. But yeah, really loving this uh, this Boros Convoke deck. Uh, yeah, the deck looks hand looks great. Let's keep. I believe he's mono red. He always plays mono red. I'm starting to get to know some of the um, people on ladder here a little bit. Okay, so let's lead out here with Lunark Veteran. Um, I guess we could technically use the Murex here. I don't think we need. Since we have two Battlefield Forges, I think we're okay just leading out with Mirix. Since next turn we can either go Bunnicorn or Double Frontliner. Okay, that's a really nice pickup. Um, unfortunately, actually no, we've got Double Frontliner, so let's just go for Veteran. Yeah, I think this play works because we've got double frontliner to kind of pick up the slack. And then I don't intend with blocking with this. I just want to go ahead and get in and start getting started.
Okay, now we can go for Bunnicorn plus Epicure. Let's do Epicure first so Bunnicorn comes in a little bit larger. I guess they've only got one mana, so it doesn't matter, but just sort of a good habit to get in. Okay, now we can go ahead and start racing a little bit. Hmm. I guess if they have like Godric, it might be good to have Frontliner back just in case. Okay, so we dropped to five. Yeah, I think we've got to start blocking here. I guess we can trade with Scoundrel. And then I definitely want to play reinforcements before they untap so we make sure we get the life. trade for all of it. So they can immediately replace Squee next turn. Hmm. Yeah, I think if, I guess next turn we could always have play the veteran and gain the life off the reinforcement dying. So I think maybe playing it like this and letting the one through. Hmm, I guess it's kind of about the same either way. But I want to be able to block Squee again, so I think I'm going to go like this and just take the three. Okay, Bunnicorn is a nice pickup there. I leave reinforcements back, keep pushing with veteran. This is definitely one of the tougher matchups for sure. Okay, so their plan is to replay Squee to get into the air. So I think we have to play Veteran this turn to make sure we can block their Godric. Now we can also bring back one of the frontliners and push in with Bunnicorn.
Okay, what are they holding here? Maybe they have a Monstrous Rage, perhaps? So otherwise they would have just gone for the Squee play. I mean, if they've got Monstrous Rage, I think we're just dead. Do we try to triple block here? I don't think so. I think the play here is to single block Godric and take the two. If they have Monstrous Rage, I think we just lose. Yeah, they've got it. Tough matchup that if you do end up playing best of three, it gets considerably better post board. But they are the other super fast deck. All right, uh, opening hand looks good. Potentially domain. So we could go Epicure here to get the Warden Scry, which I kind of like. Um, Bonicorn is nice, but since we're going for Night Errant, I think I'm going to go for the Epicure play, even though it's like less mana efficient, just to get the Scry to try to get the land. Okay, Inspector is good. Land would be better. I think we can try to go for land. Do they have Root of Persistence is the question. Okay, well we still got Inspector anyways. Um, all right, I guess with Inspector, yeah, we only have five pieces, so let's go for Bunnicorn here. We've got removal for Warden, but we still get the Scry. Okay, so that's good. We got land. So hopefully we should be able to go for Night Errant next turn. Now let's see if we can pick up, what do we want? I think definitely Warden. I guess like Warden plus reinforcements is like the most, probably the best. Well, I suppose we don't have the extra white mana, so maybe we should have gone for like Yoshin instead. Um, okay, so let's just go reinforcements into Night Errant, and that feels pretty good. Of 
question is, do we want to go for four or five? I think we will go for four and push four damage here. Yeah, I mean, like, it, we could have, like, played the Voldaren Epic here. But I think that this was better with pushing damage. Now we can drop War Leaguer's Call, provided he doesn't have a board wipe. So he's one turn off Gix's Command. Or I suppose Devious Cover-Up. Um, or not, not, um, not Devious Cover-Up, the other one. The, uh... The new five mana black wrath. Alright, let's go War Leader's Call. Okay, that's pretty wild. Did not expect that. I guess we want to go Bunnicorn. I think we just push, see what he does. Even if he picks off some small creatures, that's fine. He's probably preparing for Gix's command. Yeah, so where there's calls pretty good here. Force blocks here. He probably has to block Knight Errant. Hopefully no more counter nonsense. Good God, he's got it again. <laughs> sure. Um, okay, so I guess let's go Warden plus Epicure. I guess we can wait. It doesn't actually matter until the attack happens. So we just shove with everything. I guess like blocks here, blocks here, takes four. Maybe it's better to like not attack with knight. Oh yeah, I guess he does want to kill the Bunnicorn, so this is fine. Drops to one. I guess he didn't know about the Epicure, how that works. But yeah, War Leaders is really good. So who knows? Maybe it's right to run like three copies. Two is kind of like what I'm trying right now. If you run the deck and it feels like three maybe is better, let me know. Opening hand looks great. So I guess Warden... Um, I mean, Novice Inspector is like slightly better, as in it can attack through stuff. Epicure is less damage. Blue Green, I think they kill you via poison or like combo, so it's not as important for damage. So maybe that in mind. It's a very, very minor thing. Um, also, it helps with being able to play double white. 
So I think I'm gonna go for Battlefield Forge into Inspector here. Yeah, it's funny how much like these very minor decisions are actually a big deal. Okay, so it is the Rot Priest. They always seem to have like double Rot Priest for some reason. Okay. I guess we could hold the Silkens in. Um, again, I don't think we die to damage here, so. Let's get an extra white. And then I think we just start going with Warden. Um, yeah, like Bonicorn is good, but we want to set up for Knight Errant. So I think let's go Warden plus Epicure here. Actually, let's see, let's do Epicure first. We want to make sure there's already three things in play when we have Warden Resolve, so that if we have that moment of priority, we can use it before they do nonsense to it. So we at least get the scry off if they want to like bounce it or something. Demolition is great. I guess we could have attacked earlier and like feigned that like we had some pump. That might have been better knowing all the nonsense we were going to do here. But I think they probably block. So hopefully they don't have like Ivy or another Rat Priest here. They're probably trying to consider whether to hold up like protection on their, their Rat Priest. And I think we just ignore it and we just don't care. We don't have any removal anyways. But yeah, so next turn we play Thran Portal Demolition, our blood token, um, play Bunnicorn, go for Knight Errant, hopefully push for a lot the next turn, and just hope they don't have like March of Mists. Okay, I wonder if it is timed out or something. Um, let's see, let's just keep it at, I guess we can wait on the land. Let's figure out what we get first. Maybe they just AFK'd out. Bonicorn is pretty great. 
we don't have enough mana for both this turn, but I guess we, we yeah, I think we just pick up double Bonacorn here. Since we're definitely gonna play a Bonacorn anyways. Yeah. All right, let's have a look here at the stats. But I like the changes overall. Okay, so we are currently 67% win rate, um, 29 wins and 14 losses. So it's a nice big data set here to get uh, kind of really into the details. 82% winning on the play and 52% on the draw. So as you can see, it's pretty rough on the draw overall. For some reason, I just um, kind of got destroyed by other mirror versions of the deck. So it's just that might just be me trying to figure that out. But um, versus Mono Red, still very favorable, 6 and 2. Um, versus the Mirror here against Boros Convoke, 2 and 5. Pretty rough. That could just be just player error or just kind of, I don't know, one way or the other. They, they were kind of close. But um, Mono Black, 6 and 0. Oh, so feel really good there. Looks like we're just quite a bit faster. Uh, Mono White is 1 and 2. So again, those decks that are just a little bigger than ours. Um, but are still pretty fast, can be kind of tough. Blue-white control, or blue-white in general, is 3-0, so this is great against control matchups. Um, also 3-0 against Selesnia. Um, Demir 0-2, so kind of um, decks that are, I guess, sort of heavy on like the spot removal can be kind of tough. 50-50 against the Simic um, artifact deck. And then... Bant Toxic has been a pretty rough matchup here, um, or, or versions of Bant. Actually, actually, I think both of these Bant decks were not Toxic. They were the kind of like the weird, like draw a bunch of cards, do stuff with uh, the graveyard, with Shigeki, um, recur, uh, board wipes over and over. So, yeah, not looking great there. And then Mono Artifact, 100%, um, Orzov. Esper Control, Rakdos looking good. Um, yeah, Golgari and... I um, can't remember the names for these two guilds, but they're looking good also. So at any rate, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the minor changes there. I think that uh, War Leader's Call is a nice addition, um, especially in the control matchups. So try it out, let me know what you think, and we will see you here for the next one.